One aspect of the software industry is that it's, uh, it's kind of like a virus, a good one though. It's uh, uh, a good virus because it, if you look at it, it gets into every other industry and every aspect of our life and it changes them completely. So if you look at it, uh, all my fellow presenters today are from different industries. If you look at any single one of them and see before software and technology and after, things are a bit different. Another uh, uh, aspect of, uh, that is kind of a virus-like <laughs> is uh, basically it mutates, it evolves. So uh, uh, every day, every week, every month in software, we have a new technology, a new cool thing to do the same things or a new thing altogether. The funny thing is that we do this in style, so there is always bus, a continuum of bus in software. And uh, uh, what, uh, what happens is that you have the new wave and it has uh, new technical terms, new jargon, and all of a sudden, we don't know how, that jargon gets into the day-to-day -day language of everybody, not, even not working in software. So uh, if, you, if you ping someone to see if they are available, if you're blogging about someone, you are already infected, in a way. But, uh, uh, the good thing about it also is that it helps you become faster, it helps you become more efficient, and uh, it gives you an advantage, really. So what happens is all of a sudden you are having an advantage that can get you employed, can get you to uh, begin a new business, and sometimes this can be very, very successful. Uh, another, another bad aspect about it is it can become, no, really, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, is that it can be a bad virus, and, and the reason it can be a bad virus is because uh, uh, a funny thing is, is if you are not infected, then it's a bad thing. Uh, if you're not infected, then you're not using the technology, you're not using software, and all of a sudden, little by little, you are left behind, you are not as fast, you are not as efficient as the other guys. And uh, what happens is you can get a gap between you and all the other uh, competitors, friends, what have you. Uh, the, the bad thing, the really bad thing about this is if you are already at a disadvantage that is enforced upon you by uh, maybe your birth location, maybe your economical condition, all of a sudden, that gap is only getting bigger. Your, your disadvantage, was, which was bad, is only going to get ugly. Okay? And that is something that we all really need to consider uh, on the social level. Uh, another thing about the software industry is that uh, things come in waves. So, er, like I said, every day, every week, every month, we're having something new, a new technology, something different to do stuff. But it's only every decade or two where you have that special wave that is picking momentum kind of like a tsunami uh, kind of wave. And that wave uh, changes everything. It changes the way we interact, it changes the way we do business, it changes about everything. And uh, uh, believe it or not, for example, the PC, the personal computer, your laptop or whatever computer you are using, was one of these waves. When, when Bill Gates started Microsoft, uh, the dream or the, the slogan was a PC in every home. Now, okay, we have friends here in the audience, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what, what happened is that you have now a PC, a laptop, and maybe a netbook, and maybe more in most homes. It's not a dream anymore, it changes everything. Now, the other thing is, is the internet. When it started in 1969, uh, the internet didn't exist before. It was another one of these tsunami type of waves. So, today, I want to talk to you about two of these waves. Now, the web wave, and uh, the web wave actually started hitting like 20 years ago. And uh, currently it's in full motion and it uh, ha has changed almost everything, but I want to talk to you about some aspects of it. The other uh, wave is cloud computing. And this is a wave that is already making its initial impact in places around the world, and this is why we need to look 
for it and look after it. But first, let me start by getting rid of some jargon, some technical terms that uh, I want to clarify. So, what is the cloud? In many of our uh, books, talks, computer science, anything related, we are referring to the cloud. If you're not on the cloud, what is the cloud? Is it the internet? Is it the web? Is it uh, the new thing about cloud computing? Well, basically I have a confession on, uh, on behalf of the whole software industry. The, the cloud is, is nothing but a symbol, a diagramming notation. So, let me make that clearer. If you, if you look at what an architect uh, does, <laughs> then what, what they would use that symbol to indicate that there will be a door here. It's a symbol, it's not a door. This is definitely not a door, but it's, it indicates to fellow architects that there will be a door here. When we, now, <laughs> so uh, when we started in the computer industry, it was an island. So a single user using a single computer, life was easy. If you are drawing this, it would be easy. Then we started connecti connecting computers, and you'd have two computers connected, still manageable. Then you'd have a LAN, a local area network, and you have lots of PCs connecting to a server and uh, uh, maybe a printer, and all of these are connected through a piece of hardware called the router or a switch. Maybe now is a good time to stop. If you understood when I said LAN and router, you know you're infected, right? <laughs> okay, so up till this size, it was manageable. Okay, the drawing was easy. Now, all of a sudden, 1969, we have the ability to have one of these and maybe a single user and one of them in Africa and another sitting in the US and they are connecting. How do we draw that? So, like any other progress in science, what we did is that we used a symbol and this is the cloud. This is how the term started. And ironically, the way you connect in the cloud is through lightning. Okay? So, uh, this is a cloud. It's basically one large and somewhat intelligent connector. It, it knows how to connect one end to the other. That's what it does. But that was the case until 1990. Okay, so that was the case until 1990. Between 1990 and 1994, we had uh, Tim Berners-Lee who invented the web. 1990, and then he shared the, the standard with the whole world, and this is how the web got born. Now, let's pause here for a minute and, and imagine. Before 1990 to 1994, there wasn't anything, if you'd mentioned the word web, people would think of spiders. That's web, okay? Now, when I say web, everybody knows what web is, and it means a lot of things for them. So, it, the whole idea is, sorry, <laughs> Uh, the whole idea is that uh, on one end of the internet, we would have uh, someone uh, doing a web server, and on another end of the internet, we'd have no, <laughs> we'd have a web browser, so people anywhere can connect to any of the web servers, see what they have to offer, and the other way around. Now, now, nah. <laughs> please. <laughs> so uh, that that's the technical part how people connect and, and things, but. Really, 